Hello class. I um, want to spend a few minutes going over the answers to our chapter one homework. Again, just a reminder, you can make corrections and repost in the Dropbox uh, for uh, additional points. But one way or another, you need, if you do the corrections, you need to do them in red with some explanation uh, as to why you were wrong and what the, the correction you're making so that you can use that uh, as a learning tool. Uh, going forward. So uh, number eight, we're looking at the standard deduction. Uh, we're going to have the 3800 plus the 350 uh, for this full-time student. Uh, the earned income is the 3800 and then the 350 is statutory uh, on top of that. Uh, if his wages are 6850, his uh, or his earned income is 6,500, uh, then it's 6,500 plus the 350 uh, in this case, uh, up to the amount of the standard deduction for uh, a single person. So uh, in C, uh, we're over 65, uh, and so we do uh, the 12,000 plus the 1,300, 13, three, and in D, dependent, so uh, we have the 1,050 uh, plus the 1,600 for being blind, uh, single. Uh, that's going to offset most of her taxable interest, but she will still have some earned income, uh, some income on the tax return, taxable income that is. Uh, for nine, simple calculation, start with uh, uh, income, AGI. Uh, remember certain deductions are taken out before AGI and then the standard deduction is after AGI. In this case you got the standard deduction for married filing jointly and for age 1300. Uh, together you can add those together or you can subtract them out separately, it doesn't matter. Uh, you get the same result, the taxable income. So we ask for taxable income, that's what we want. If I had asked for the tax calculation then you would have to calculate the tax or the tax liability, you would calculate the taxes on that income. Uh, but this will only ask for the taxable income here. All right, number 11, series of, uh, you might say a little bit far out examples of uh, relatives and whether they qualify as qualifying child, qualifying relative. Remember, you want pre preference as qualifying child because if they're a qualifying child, they do not subject to the income limitations. Qualifying relative is, uh, but the cousin is neither. Uh, it's not part of the list for a qualifying relative, and it's not a qualifying child. Uh, the father is a relative. Uh, foster mother is neither, uh, not listed. Uh, so D and E, we have issue with uh, we have one issue with age, so they can't be a qualifying child and uh, either qualifying child to uh, taxpayer spouse, but not to the taxpayer. And we have some qualifying children, another qualifying relative uh, on I, uh, still related because of the former spouse, but uh, uh, not a, a child, neither on the uncle that is uh, uncle of the taxpayer's deceased spouse because the relationship was by marriage, not by blood, that, that is not a qualifying relative. And then the last three are qualifying relatives as well. All right, um, moving on to number 12, filing status. We have someone who is single. We have two that are married. Uh, they can be either separately or jointly. That's kind of a choice. Almost all, you, it's, you don't have to do one or the other uh, if you're married. Uh, so qualifying widower, if you have a dependent child and your spouse dies, then you may be a qualifying widower, uh, but only if there's a dependent child. Uh, single, uh, because they're divorced at the end, by the end of the year, and that's always a little uh, tricky in the tax law as to when that divorce becomes uh, final, and 
it, it's just know that that's something that you may have to uh, uh, work on to figure out when when that happens because for whatever reason some folks some of these cases drag on for quite some time um, F is a head of household and what we might consider a uh, abandoned spouse in the law. Uh, they get to claim head of household technically even though um, they are married because uh, the, they've been abandoned by their spouse, can't find them to divorce them. So the tax law allows for the head of household. Uh, and then another head of household, uh, if your spouse files separately, you're, you must file separately. So you can't, you have to go on. So if the other one is already filed and separately, then that you must do it. So, and then the last one could be a head of household because they have dependents, but they're not a qualifying child dependent. And so that means that they cannot be a qualifying widower. Remember, it's very specific uh, to be a qualifying widower, and it really is just filing jointly. It's, it's not a separate uh, filing status. It just simply uses the, the fi filing jointly uh, tax tables and all of the other uh, numbers. Then the last one, 17, is looking at what the standard deduction is and what the income is required to file. So literally, you don't have to file unless, of course, you, you've you got a, um, so you want to get a tax refund, then you can file, but you don't have to uh, if, you, if you don't want to, if your income is below a certain threshold. And as you can see here, it's generally the same as the standard deduction. Uh, so for A and B, the standard deduction is the same as income required, 4250. We've got uh, age and blindness going on here. Um, now, C gives you the one example of when it is different. Uh, so you use the age and blindness for the single standard deduction, but you don't consider it for the filing threshold. So the filing threshold is lower. Uh, you might say a quirk in the law. I don't know that there's any good reason for why that is different, but it is. Um, and so other than that, you see everything else except for married filing separately. Uh, one of those kind of gotchas in the law for married filing separately. Uh, and one of them is your income required to file is zero, meaning basically you have to file no matter what your income is. Uh, even though your standard deduction is 13.3. Uh, and then, of course, the F is, is the same. So that's the issue uh, with whether people need to file and what the standard deduction is. You see that it's very closely related, uh, except in a couple of situations where it is uh, statutorily in the law different.